not gangster. That's very not gangster. I came up, got my name up. So when they speak of who blinged up, I'm who they bring up. Come up dissing and you'll come up missing. I'm a cutthroat baller like OJ Simpson. I came up, got my name up. So when they speak of who blinged up, I'm who they bring up. Come up dissing and you'll come up missing. Say that again. I couldn't hear you over the sound of me sh myself. I done came up. Got my name up, so when they speak of who blinged up, I'm who they bring up. Come up dissing and you'll come up missing. I'm a cutthroat baller like OJ Simpson. Little homie, listen, try and serve me. I put a 25 in your back like Barry Bonds jersey. On the streets, on the beach, y'all ain't able. Cause two, I shit on rappers like major labels. What's with the ice grilling, homie? Change your face. This heat will do more than tan you to change your race. Girls love metaphor, and I love them back. Addicted to getting head to the Call me the Brainiac, battle rap with words wall like G had. I write dope, flow crack, my notepad need rehab. Fuck y'all CDs, y'all can't see these or touch these. Rhyme so chronic, my songs give you the munchies. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Death Fresh Show. This is I, Mr. Tone Death. I'm back in the building. Um, I'm flying solo today because my partner in crime, unfortunately, has a job where he can't take off on the weekends. Sucks to be you, my guy. But I am not going to be on this trip today alone. So if you guys heard the last episode that we did on the Death Fresh Show, we did announce that the Death Fresh Show itself have reached its 10-year point uh give myself a round of applause on that as well as a 10-year ride for TDI as a whole so today this episode is extra special for multiple multiple reasons um anybody who's actually been following us know that every once in a while I'll do my where I come from series I took a break uh after season two because with COVID kind of changing the game uh we picked up so many podcasts that i just gave up my time slot to allow other shows to have an opportunity so i'm bringing it back so i decided to bring it back the best way i could possibly bring it back um this particular young lady who is on this episode with me today is very near and dear to not just uh me personally but to the brand of TDR as a whole. Um, she has been solely responsible for the motivation, the elevation, the creation of what you see TDR as of today. Um, she definitely made the Death Fresh show very interesting on numerous occasions um, due to the fact that she did not want to continue on the blog talk format as she branched off and created what I can possibly say the most popular show on TDR, which is hopefully awkward. I am joined today by my sister, the one and only Mimi So 100, AKA. Come on, walk if you're nasty. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right. So let me go ahead and let's clear the air before I get uh, everything started. So, for the 10-year episode, Juan put together uh, the guest list uh, for what we're doing. And I think, bro, honest to God, completely forgot that the day he scheduled the most recent episode was also the anniversary. So if you listen to the 420 episode that dropped this year, it was actually the very first episode we ever recorded. Um, I went and cleaned it up a little bit. Well, as much as I fucking could. Because, <laughs> God damn, that shit was trash. But a lot of people don't realize, unless you finish the whole entire episode, you don't understand that Mimi has actually been here since day one with us. Um, after we fired KC live on air, uh, Mimi actually came on air with us for the second half, and she actually rode with us the, all the way through. Um, some of the most memorable episodes were actually done by Mimi. Um, to the point where you sick, twisted fuckers decided to start create, made us create a segment called Ask Mimi, <laughs> where you will send in some of y'all most perverted thoughts and questions, and this woman would actually sit here and answer them. Um, 
which sparked the idea that she is now what would we call you the ghetto whisperer no you no. actually it was the ghetto prophet the ghetto prophet that's what it was you're the light skin whisperer that's a, <laughs> watch hopefully awkward to understand what that is all about believe me it is not something i want to talk about today but what i do want to talk about mimi is um the reason why you're really here Comer's Candy Closet. So, for the listeners who don't know, what is it? Why is it? And how do we get here? So, um, for those who are not familiar with me, I started in OnlyFans under the moniker Comer Walker. Uh, The reason for that, people always, you know, ask me how I came up with that name or they just so intrigued by it. Uh, It was during the portion of time where Cummer Walker was kind of under fire. You mean so Summer speak. Walker? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Summer Walker. <laughs> Thinking of me. Um, Summer Walker you was under fire too. <laughs> was under fire um, for expressing her issues with anxiety. Right. But she was still, you know, like posting pictures of herself online, whether, you know, it was a little right, bikini. Right, because wasn't she a rubber. dancer before? Yeah, she, she was that. a dancer. So there were a lot of people uh, that felt that there was no way that she could suffer from anxiety but be comfortable posting those pictures online. Right. We all know that I am one of the most outspoken people to ever grace this planet. But how do I act in person? You are probably the most awkwardest person when it comes to socializing with people who the you don't know. Awkward. Which a lot of people were kind of figuring like why is it called because a lot of people when they come in here and look on the wall oh just to let you know your new logo got put up there Yay! it got updated today um they would think it says socially awkward until they realize that the d is a dick <laughs> <laughs> and then they go back and reread it again and like you know what just listen to the show she goes live every monday night at 8 p.m 8 ish between 8 and 9 o'clock we'll be Live. Right, that's the best we could tell. We you. shoot for eight thirty because you know the diva, but no, um, but being able to relate to that, like I love, love, love Summer Walker. Like right. there's so much of her that I see, you know, like in myself. Right. Um, and being able to relate to that, like I used to be a dancer. You know what I mean? Like I'm real vocal and outspoken and I'm able to post pictures and be sexual and stuff online but it's like when I'm dealing with people in person it's a completely different animal like I don't like people in my space like I clam up I just I don't like that you don't um so during the time I had actually just recently found out about OnlyFans so I told everybody that I was going to start an OnlyFans and I was going to make my name Comer Walker. A lot of people, you know, took that with a grain of salt, but I really did it. You did. So, you know, once I got that shit, like, really, really cracking, damn, and it was like, damn, like, she was she was for real. She on it. Um, and from there, I used the money that I made from my OnlyFans right. in order to branch out and start my own adult store. Right comer's candy closet so let me ask you this question um i personally know the answer but i'm interviewing you like i don't know who the fuck you is so (laughs) did did the actual announcement like when you officially went out there and did it and created the page how'd that affect your personal life um for the most part people have been extremely supportive of it okay And I think it's one of those things where a lot more people are living vicariously through me. Uh, Sad part is true. Because that's something that that they would love to be able to do, but they're just too restricted by, you know, everybody else's thoughts and opinions and worried about the consequences of doing so. And that's never really something that I had to worry about. Like I've always had an open relationship um regarding discussions about sex right. with you know my parents my grandmother you know before she passed away uh i actually just recently lost my last grandmother a couple of weeks ago and you know what she was looking forward to before she died getting some penis 
<laughs> she was trying to buy a toy for me. Like she had my <laughs> uncle call me. The sad part is I remember we were literally getting yeah. ready to record. <laughs> she had my uncle call me because she wanted to see my inventory. Um, so, you know, I come from a long line of women that have always been very open and upfront and blunt with their sexuality. You know what I mean? So that wasn't something that I grew up feeling that I had to hide about myself. Right. That wasn't something that I felt like I had to be ashamed of just because I was a woman. Right. And that's another reason, you know, for the creation of Hoshally Awkward, being able to talk about those topics that people feel that women shouldn't. Right. You know, just because of the fact that we're women. You know, whenever there's something where we own our sexuality publicly, we get shame for that. We damn near, like, if, if... we were back in those times, we would be getting the shit stoned out of us. Yeah. <laughs> or else you'll be in the local whore that everybody was sleeping Niggas with and nobody wanted to, to marry. The hung us right. or some shit, so, you know? one of the great things about uh, being in the podcasting world, especially when you started with Death Fresh Show, was people used to send us questions. Some of them made it on the show. Other ones we turned into topics. Um, so I'm going to go in the bag uh, throughout this episode. And we're going to go back to some of the random questions that were asked. And let's see if your answers are any different. <laughs> All right. So it's been 10 years for a lot of these. All right. So I'm a, let's just jump out the window with some of the easier ones. Is sex a bigger priority for men or women? Um, As far as with priority, I would think that is men. Um, that's not to say that women aren't as sexual as men, but I feel like men are a lot more sexually motivated. Okay. Like we love sex. We enjoy sex. Like that is a huge, you know, part of us as well, but we're not as sexually motivated to do things as men are. So let me ask you this question. What's your only fans? Um, and I know you can't really tell who subscribed to you. Or let me back that up. Can you tell who subscribed to you? You know, um, I actually have a lot of people on my OnlyFans that don't change uh, their identity. Because when you sign up for OnlyFans, you have the opportunity to sign in with your Twitter handle. Or you can create like an anonymous, right. you know, handle for you to use. Honestly, for the most part, I have a lot of people that they don't care about knowing, you know, so some people... You- do you have more men or women subscribe? Um, I do have more men, but the women go hard. Like the women are some of the biggest supporters and tippers and just, it's like the women are more appreciative of what I do. Whereas the men are, you know, like they're there for the entertainment, the same as the women are. But, you know, I feel that the women do tend to have a lot more um, interaction with me in that. Do you feel that it's because they're not as entitled? Right. That's what I'm saying. Do you feel that it's well, we are noticing the entitlement issue more than anything. But do you feel that because so many of your followers vicariously live through you, specifically the women? Do you think that they're more supportive for you because you command your scenes? Like you're not the girl who just happens to be coming over here on a casting couch and you're doing whatever to do saying like you are in control of the whole scene. Yeah, I run this shit. That's what I'm like I, I'm trying to say it with see you gotta understand this first of all, this is my sister. So I'm trying to ask questions in a way that I don't get the answer that make me go Ugh. in the end. <laughs> Now, our other brother, she he'll shut her off the whole time. At least I will have dialogue with you. But, like, do you feel like it's because you are a dominant woman in your your materials? No, I just think that when it comes to guys, it's really just, you know, an entitlement thing. Okay. Um, because it's, it's not every guy. I have a lot of guys on there that they tip often, you know, they interact and they're you know, they're there for the full experience. But then you have guys who feel like you are supposed to, you know, swing upside down, sucking dick from a ceiling fan with a monkey hanging off your back, but they don't want to tip or do anything. Oh, my. (laughs) You know, um, those are the guys that you will see when you go into uh, a strip club. And, you know, 
I'm knocking shit over. Sorry, y'all. That's what that loud bump was. Dang, you act like the Death Fresh show used to be quiet when we recorded. No, I'm just saying. That was like, like the number one reason why we end up moving to your house to record. <laughs> <laughs> See, I keep. That's because this thing is tilting. That's on me. Sorry. That's My cool. bad. It's cool. It wouldn't be the. It wouldn't be the show if it wasn't something yeah. going on. But um, those are the guys that you will see. Like they'll pay the entry fee to get into a strip club, but, but then tip, you know they don't want to tip the dancers. But yet they want her to, you know, like in Players Club when she was like, "Bend over, stick your back out, do the bank head bounce." Like that's them. They have the most demands for things that they want you to do in these videos or, you know, these kind of scenes that they want and all this other kind of stuff. But it's like, you don't pay me for that. And like I said, I used, I used to be a dancer and that was something where that, uh, played a huge part in where I would be like in like different parties and stuff, because I'm not about to sit here, walk out in this room full of niggas and just get naked and hope y'all pay me. No, y'all go that's, throw that money out first. That's not how this works. Right. Y'all go throw this money out first. And the more money y'all throwing out, the more, the more I'm taking off. All right. You know, and, and it was a lot of chicks that didn't really get that. So especially, especially when we like when we did shit, like whether it's bachelor parties, like whatever, if we got um, called to do something um, in Chicago. That was actually the last place I ever did anything. <laughs> And you have a mix of us coming in, but then you have local chicks from Chicago. The fucking hook, the beginning beat coming in is barely done, but you're already butt naked. So now niggas feel like, oh, well, she already doing this. What y'all finna do? You know what's funny? I'm finna go get dressed and go home because I'm not I'm not finna sit here. You know what's funny? And y'all got three dollars and it looks (laughs) like a rusty penny on the floor. No, bro. And then (laughs) is that a popcorn kernel? What the fuck? No. No. What's funny is. um. Just past weekend, um, they did the Milwaukee to Phoenix thing. So apparently, uh, a lot of the strippers from Milwaukee went to Phoenix with the intentions of working while down there. Because, you know, niggas go out of town. They might not go to a strip club when they're in town, but they want to pop in and go to the strip club where they're there. Um, an altercation actually happened in the strip club because it was like 20-something Milwaukee chicks who came to the local strip club working and the locals were there didn't appreciate that well you know i think that's actually why i had um i didn't understand at first but there was a rule no crying in the pink no (laughs) um there was a rule where when it came to strip clubs you couldn't if you were a woman Mm -hmm. you couldn't get in by yourself makes sense you had to come in with a guy because he has to spend and my thing was i didn't know that so when i went this was at ricky's (laughs) so um matter of fact this was during a time like when me and lando like first started dating okay and it was you know lando jbz jibo like it was the whole crew right but you know me i'm always fashionably late you are such a nigger for that but continue I get there and dude don't want to let me in. And he like, well, where your uh, where your male escort or whatever. And I'm like, the fuck you? I thought he was asking me you where my pimp was. Right. Like I was asking. like, I ain't got no fucking male. Like, and I'm going off on him. And he like, well, you can't get in. So I'm like, I'm getting mad because I think he's telling me I can't get in without a pimp. <laughs> and it just so happened that <laughs> it was either G Boy or JB. One of them came outside. And they saw him and they was like, oh, no, she with us, whatever. And I'm telling him, he's like, no, that ain't what that means. <laughs> like, it, he had to break it down and explain right. it to me. But I got it after that. Because, you know, they don't want you coming in and, you know, you trying to get the niggas to go trying and you're taking take the money, money out of the club. So right. they want to make sure that you're coming in with somebody, basically, so that they can keep a leash on your ass. All right. So one of the questions... I don't think I remember asking this question. I think this was the very next time we ever did ask Mimi. I had this one prepared. All right. So, hello, Mimi. I have a question. I have a friend, and she's been been dating this guy for three months. It's not official yet. They act like a couple. He even introduced her to the family. 
He's a great guy. He treats her good, but they don't have sex because he's very into religion. I actually know who's saying this question. I think about it. So the question is, is it considered cheating since they're not official? I mean, if you're not official, you're not cheating on anyone. Um, I don't understand the point of really going through all of those motions, though, mm-hmm. when you're not with them. But, you know, everybody handles that shit different. Well, but no, I... it's, it's not cheating because you're not in a committed relationship. And that's the problem with a lot of people now. They get to those points where y'all building these bonds are better than a title relationship with people. Right. And then you want to get in your chest because, yes, he's introduced you to the fam. Yes, you've been to, you know, his little nephew basketball games and hey, softball little, games little, and all this Chris shit. Got a killer yeah, his mama made a, she might have made you a fucking sweet potato pie on, you know, your birthday, whatever the case may be. But it's like when y'all don't make things official, official that leaves motherfuckers open to do whatever they want to do. So and that's why motherfuckers want us in that position. Well, it, with this particular situation, I think it's kind of unique because it's not that he's not making it. A, he's not having sex with her because he's putting his dick in other bitches. He's really saving himself for marriage. So because she's already been sexually active and she wants to continue being sexually active, maybe in his mind, he already thinks they are a couple. He's doing all the the couple things. I just think they didn't never have the conversation. Well, uh, see, and that's where communication comes in. Right. You have to communicate with people that you were involved with. You have to have a full understanding from both parties what you are doing. True. And if you feel that this guy is, he's a good guy, he's whatever, you know, he's taking you on these dates y'all are having, all of these deep moments and shit, but you feel like him not wanting to have sex with you because of religious reason, reasons is a problem, then that's something that, you have to decide, do I want to continue dating this person or do I want to go elsewhere? Because if it's for religious reasons, it's most likely that that situation is not going to change. So why put yourself in a position to hurt dude because, you know, you're trying to get all of the benefits from him that he's offering you, but you know that he's not going to give you any dick. It's the same way if it was on, if the shoe was on the other foot. You know what I mean? Like I can't expect somebody to be committed to me if I haven't, you know, asked for that from you to say, hey, are you okay with us being in a relationship even though I'm saving myself for X, Y, Z, you know, for whatever reason it is. Like, people just assume, and that's where people get fucked up at. And then that's why you have people being mad and subbing motherfuckers on Facebook every day because they didn't make their relationship or lack of very clear. Okay. So... I'm going to kill you, by the way, because I've been doing real good on my diet. Now you got me drinking wine. Now I'm going to have to burn off some calories. Just go make some content. I know. That's what I'm saying. Mm, so well, how is it my fault? It's actually working in your favor. You probably didn't even I'm plan sure. on making content today. <laughs> so look, now you're in the mood. But I'm glad you brought that up because the next question actually comes from a female. Okay. My situation is I'm 24 years old. I recently started dating my high school crutch who was 26. You know, the guy that's way out your league. I love sex. Got to have it every day. More than once a day. My kind of girl. All right. I like her. I like her. It's been two months since the last time I had sex. My boyfriend. Okay. Seven by a long time was the answer I got. All right. So over the past weekend, we were messing around and I decided to have sex. Well, he came not even being inside me for two minutes. He apologized and says, next time, I should last longer. Well, two hours later, same thing happened. It was barely a tease for me. I'm a very sexual person. I love pleasing my man any way I can, and I love 
for the favor. Damn, did I return- anonymously submit this shit? My That's, I, was, I was trying not to say nothing, but when I start, when I seen it, I was like, "Yep, I got to talk about this one." <laughs> in my twenties, though, niggas wasn't having a problem. Niggas having it now because they old and dusty. You are supposed to be messing with younger ones though, for that reason. I just what told I y'all on hostly awkward. It was the young nigga that nutted fast. That's and what get his shit together. Okay, and young bulls can't hang either. Shit. <laughs> Maybe you. We tell you that all the time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm nervous for the next time we try to have sex, the same thing is going to happen. That I'm left unsatisfied and me no like that. She said it just like that. What can I do? I mean, there's nothing really that you... Send him a text message that you don't want to talk to him no more. No, like, there's nothing that you can really do about him not being able to... Let me ask you this last, question. Like, I mean, now with me being older... Mm-hmm. You know, I know that there are a few things that you can try to do, whether he taking a supplement or maybe using a cock ring to help him maintain his erection and stuff. But, you know, younger people, they don't really be knowing. So since we're here talking about assistance, what do you have in Cumber's Candy Closet that might be able to um, help this young lady out? Um, Like I said, with cock rings, uh, with being able to apply that pressure Mm -hmm. and kind of like, uh, putting that restriction with the blood flow, helping to maintain his erection. Uh, mm-hmm. That's definitely something that they can use. I've been looking um, at adding various creams and stuff to the site. I just want to make sure that anything that I'm adding is in compliance Okay. Uh, with my merchant service provider. I don't want to be selling anything that I got to have any extra clearance for or anything <laughs> like that. So that's why I don't have... Um, a lot of, like, because some people, they have, like, CBD and all that kind of stuff. Like, I have to go through extra steps to right. carry those products, and it's just, it's not worth it. Somebody I know just got approved to sell CBD. Yeah. I, I remember so, later. What about, um, what about I've been for researching her, various, uh, like, stay hard creams and stuff like that to help them maintain. Does that even work, though? Erections. I've heard a lot of people um, giving reviews, so that's what I've been doing, researching different brands and stuff to see. Um which I feel would be suitable enough to carry because right. there was actually um, like a vaginal tightening cream that I went to have on the site. I have a different one now, but the one that I initially uh, put on there, I removed it because it's like after doing further research, it was just. It seemed like it would cause problems. Yeah. It was kind of thing like it'll work for what you want, but it may cause anal bleeding. No, it wasn't that uh. bad. It was just it worked for what it was supposed to but it would give women like a lot of discomfort and i'm not Them side you know effects be bitches i swear yeah and obviously you know cummer's candy closet is created that's you know that's an income source that right. is something that i am trying to build an empire from so you know of course i want profit on it but i don't want to profit at the expense of other people's health I want to make sure that any of the products that I carry are, you know, not only for bringing pleasure into the bedroom, but it's not going to make you at risk for anything else. That's why even with the lubes and stuff that I carry, I carry natural lubricants. So you do know, you to try make sure all that your products no extra out? Chemicals. Hmm? You try all your products out on your on your site, or you just got your favorites that you deal with? I have my favorites because you know everything that I sell isn't for me. This is true. You know, I can't just choose things on the website that I like because there are a lot of different kinks and, you know, a lot of stuff that it may not be for me, but I'm certainly not going to judge you for it just because you are. So that doesn't mean that I'm not going to carry this product because, oh, well, I don't use this, so I'm not going to sell it. No, I yes. I want to cater to everybody. I want to have everybody being able to say, hey. I can shop at Cam- Cummer's Candy Closet, and I know that there's going to be something for me. What's so I have wi- a lot more coming. What's the wildest thing that you have on your website that you've seen people buy, and you was like, okay, that's what you like? The um, the Keisha Gray, it's, uh, it's for people who have a foot fetish. <laughs> So, I'm you know, it's a mold. I'm it's a mold. a mold of feet. Yeah, it's a mold of her feet, and they can masturbate with it. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, it, like you said, everybody has their, their kinks. They do, you know, and ed, ed, and everything is, is you know, welcome. Like, I don't turn anybody away. If there is somebody that feels that um, there's something that they're looking for. Right. 
you know, and you want to shop black owned and you don't see it, there is nothing stopping you from shooting an email and saying, hey, you know, have you ever considered carrying this product or, you know, I've been looking for this for a while. Is this something that you feel like you can get your hands on? Okay. Uh, with my vendors, uh, I use U.S. US based vendors, so okay. it doesn't take me long to get products in at all. Um, this is actually something. I, I know you're not live, but I'm live. <laughs> I like. I knew you would bring something. I expected you to bring something. It wouldn't have been you if you didn't bring something. But you know, like even with this, this is something that I didn't originally carry. What is that? Um, that looks like an ice cream cone. It is. It's called the Sweet Treat Spinator. So, fam, y'all getting jazzy with a strawberry ice cream cone? Yeah. <laughs> you so know, it comes what? in pink and black. But that—that's something that I wasn't carrying initially. But you know, Somebody it was a crest from somebody, and it took me three days to get it. I wonder how they, they the site, even came so. about. Like, that's wild. Yeah, but it's definitely... Uh, and that's from the Satisfier series, right? Satisfier series. Now, this one isn't app controlled, though. Um, okay. Yeah, so this one isn't Bluetooth. Um, if you are looking for any type of toys that allow you to have them um, controlled by either your Apple Watch, anything with iOS, Android apps on your phones, uh, Satisfier series is definitely where it's at. Uh, they come with 15 year product guarantees. Well, see, for 15 all, years. So all you people are out there who looking at starting the OnlyFans, that is for, definitely. Well, that a good and the investment. fact those of you that keep burning out those roses, you may want to look into the Satisfier series because 15 year product guarantee. Roses don't have that. Well, you know, roses are like your gateway toy. Like well, you, you know, for me, I don't have the problem that a lot of other people have with their roses. One, I feel like they overcharge them. They you leave know, them on the charger entirely saying, too long. But that's because we're accustomed to just leaving our stuff on the charger until we need it. Like, how many times have people actually used... You're currently doing it right now. You're using your phone while it's on the charger. I'm using my laptop while it's on the charger. Yeah, well, my char- my phone was only on 16% when I walked in. No, 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 that makes sense. But that's the mentality that a lot of us have. Like, if it can work, it can work. The charging stand, which for some odd reason people kept losing it yeah. at one point in time. So they feel like, well, if I just leave it on here... It looks fancy on my desk. Yeah, but you know, I had a lot of people that uh, I think they're burning them out because they're charging them way too long. Like okay. they're, you know, you should be able to charge it usually within I think about two to three hours fully charged, and they leave it on there like overnight and how everything long, else, and then how you know long do you, that can damage the battery. How long does the battery last? Because I mean, honestly, the, the way y'all talking, listen, y'all barely need five minutes of usage. Listen, I. Got mine in what? Probably like July, August. It was sometimes summer wise because it was it was before I started Cummer's Candy Closet. That's right. how I knew I wanted to sell them once I did start. Right. I can tell you that because of how fast it works, I have maybe, maybe in the course of what, nine, ten months, whatever. Have used my charger max two times. Max. And that was including when I first bought the motherfucker and I fully charged it when I took it out of the box. Yeah, that's what because I, was I don't have it it doesn't have to be on long. So right. I don't understand how people that's what I was need wondering. to like you don't keep, have to even keep charging them, them like that. Maybe they just, you know, pass out and it just hums them to sleep. Maybe that's <laughs> possible. That's but, possible. Uh, so um let's let's transition for a minute here. So Cumber's Candy Closet is your business venture that was birthed out of you doing OnlyFans and your OnlyFans was birthed out of you doing Hoshly Awkward. Mm-hmm. Let's let's start right there. What made you want to do Hoshly Awkward? I didn't. Interesting. I didn't. Um going back to the early Dead Fresh days, like it's always been something that people have like thrown my way. Right. And I have always given the excuse like, no, I can't commit to that. I can't, you know, like that's not something that I want to have people looking forward to right. because it's like, if I don't feel like doing it, I don't feel like doing it. Right. When I came in and guest starred on y'all shit, you know, had my little segments and whatever, that was completely different because it wasn't an obligation for me. And we wasn't recording that much. 
Right. So, you know, <laughs> it it was, you know, I pop in, I do my little shit, I have my buzz, and then I go back into my hole. You know what I mean? Like, right. but with actually creating a podcast of my own, like, I didn't want to. I don't like committing to things. <laughs> so what made you pull the trigger on it? Because you called me up one day. You know. It was like, Tom, I'm ready to start my show. That was after. I lost my job in 2018. True. And I knew that I was going to have a free time. I'm like, well, I'm not working. So it's not really, you know, anything eating up my time at this point. Right. And then I needed an outlet because of just everything that I was going through mentally at that moment. You know, like um, Re was dealing with her stuff, you know, with her mental health issues. Right. And I had just lost a job and. I was dealing with my own demons. Like it was just a lot. And I felt like I needed an outlet. Um, and I can't get suspended recording hopefully awkward. <laughs> like I can't type in a Facebook stat. <laughs> the sad so, part, that, that yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so it's we, a lot easier. It is. So we are 122 episodes later. Now it also includes bonus episodes in between there two people. What have you learned about yourself while since you started your your podcast? That I still have commitment issues because there are a lot of days I just don't want to fucking come in here. But people are looking forward to me coming in here, so I do it for them. Yeah, because it was days you was like, I don't feel like recording. And I'm like, okay, yeah, <laughs> um, I'm ready to stay home myself. Yeah, but you know, it's nice to have that motivation right. and that push. You know, from my listeners, like even when I was sick, like my was like, oh man, like they were salty, but at the same time, it's like they were still, they you know, were, they were there. I hope you get better and you know, whatever. Yeah. But you know, just knowing that there are people that are looking forward to hearing my thoughts and opinions and everything on a weekly basis, like right. I feel like that's dope. Um, but yeah, I definitely just after so many people kept coming to me about telling me that I need to do it, I need to do it, I need to do it. Right. I just said, fuck it, I got the time, let's go for it and see where it go. So what, what's your favorite episode? I know I know, I know it's going to be a hard one to answer, but what what is what do you remember as your favorite episodes or moments? Honestly, I have multiple. Um, but at the top of my list are my episodes where I have Reed come in. I knew you was going to say that. Like, being able to share my relationship with my daughter, you know, with the world and show the type of interactions that we have and being able to just show her brilliance and her intelligence and like how much of an asshole she is like you. Yeah. Like, you know, with like, you know, she's 16 now and being able to show how she can have those grown up conversations mm -hmm. With us, and it's you know it's not too much. It's not over the top. It's not you know. Oh damn, you know she she doing a lot to be sixteen. Like no, like it's just nice because a lot of adults are fucking stupid. <laughs> so being statement. able to have you know this child come into this space and share that she gets a lot of shit that a lot of grown motherfuckers just can't comprehend, and I created that. That's dope. Like, so, I love my episodes with Ree, man. So, when I think about the conversations when you and Ree be sitting down, I do think about uh, other shows like Red Table Talk and whatnot. Do you think you could ever do an episode where it's just you, Ree, and your mom? No. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 Why not? No. Absolutely not. No. Um. Well, for one, my mom is like supreme button push like she got Andre the giant hands when it comes to pushing buttons so I don't think we'll mesh well on air because at some point she go irritate both me and Bree. Okay, because you know Ree's getting older and you know those heads are starting to bump plus okay. they're both Scorpios same birthday Ooh, Yeah, and I'd be like in the middle like mm -hmm. eh um, but honestly just my mom isn't really receptive to a lot of things because, you know, when they older, they, they kind of stuck in their way. ways. Right. They're not really like, hey, I've had a lot of therapy sessions about this. Like, and my mom, my mom was legit mad at my therapist. Like, well, I feel like uh, that bitch is just telling you, like, first of all, 
she's helping me process the shit that you put me through. That's why you upset. That's because you don't is. want to accept responsibility for certain things that you've created in me trauma wise as a parent. Well, they always say they did the best what they can with what they have and that'd be the excuse. But you know And if, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I, no, mean, I get it. It's still damage that was created. It wasn't that she was a horrible parent in the sense that like she always made sure I had everything under the sun. That was her love language. And that is where the disconnect happens right because she feels that because she provided everything for me financially materialistic you know like even when re was born right you know like she did so much but she didn't realize that i didn't have that nurturing side that you from probably her needed more i didn't than- spend time with my mom we didn't have you know mother daughter dates where we just went out to the mall and went shopping or went out to eat, went and saw a movie. Like, we didn't have that. My mom was always at work. So all she did was work, stayed in the house, and bought shit. Now, I did shit like going to the movies and going to the mall and going skating and all that shit as a kid. She was dropping me and my friends off, but that was never something that me and her did. So I tried to, you know, make sure that once, my kids were already, like that was stuff that I was doing. Like we had our weekly dates every right. Thursday. Where was we at Butler? This is true. We was make sure that we was going to the movies and shit all the time. Like where we was had our weekly outings with going out to eat and little shit like that. Cause I didn't have that with my mom. So like I said, it's not that she was the most horrible motherfucker in the planet. She wasn't, she, she was. just didn't understand the nurturing aspect of being a mother. Right. She was, know, a prov- she was a she was a provider. I that think a lot thing. of I think a lot of the parents of that generation were more of providers than nurturers. Some of them it wasn't their fault because single moms having to work to care for everything. When do you have time to be that loving person? Um, so I, I kind of get it. Like that's the issue I had with my mom. I still kind of have it to a certain extent, but I make sure my kids at least have access to me as much as possible. So I get it. All right. So, we talk about Ree. She's been on the show. Do you think there'll ever be a day where Beans will be on the show? I doubt it. Um, only because, like... Uh, for those of you listening who don't know, Beans is her youngest daughter. Yeah. So, Ree is <laughs> turning 17 this year, and Beans will be 12. Oh, Beans is 12. Yeah. <laughs> but, no. Um, Jelly Bean has... She still has that innocence to her. Okay. You know, like, so even with everything going on, like a house full of sex toys and everything, like, she's still the type to, like, walk past TV if motherfuckers <laughs> kissing too long, like, you know, holding her, covering her eyes and shit. So, I don't see her being being there, you know, uh, but, you know, real, as she gets older, she might be on, you know, even more than she has been, but no. She'll I don't probably, see beans. Do you think she she'll just, go to Ree first she before she so, go to she's you? She's so pure, man. Your beans is so pure. It's just, it's hard, you know. Beans. So the fact that you tried to taint her with porn on the tablet. I did not try to See, for those of you guys who's listening, I did not try to taint my my little niece. She opened my tablet and accidentally clicked on the photo section mm-hmm. and seen a fistful of Lacey Duvall. <laughs> And I mean, a fistful. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, that's exactly what she ends up seeing. So, ever since then, I definitely have, and I've been using the same app since then too. I, I have a photo vault app. All right, so let's transition to one of these questions. Um, I actually remember asking you this question once before, and now that I look at it, I'm sad that this question is still relevant to this day and age. All right. Ten years later, it's still relevant? It's still relevant. Let me write it down. I'm an older woman who has used online dating sites and such to try to meet men. Haven't been very successful in a relationship category for a while. I've come to notice that after chatting online, then texting, then setting up meet and greets, then getting a lot of sexual innuendos via text the actual day to meet. I have one tonight with the guy who just texted me in quotations. You got a big booty? I have various photos on my profile so that I'm not constantly being asked for body shots or such. I know Photoshop is a real thing and it dupes guys. So I want I want to go bitch on him via text. So basically she wanna snap 
and ask him, do you have a big dick? But then I think I'm, it's me being too uptight. Am I wrong for giving him the same energy I get, I get from him? I don't feel that it's wrong. Um, it's just you have to, in that specific situation, you have to look at how he's coming. And with him asking that question, Remember earlier in the show when I said that I feel like men are more sexually motivated Mm -hmm. and things. It doesn't mean that we don't like to fuck. It don't mean that we not thinking about the shit. You know, it's just when it comes to interactions with us, it's more sexually motivated. Whereas we may be looking for something that's more emotional or, you know, whatever the fuck they be doing. Not me. I'm trying to fuck because. Don't so, a nigga deserve my emotions right now. So that's and, and, um, that, and that gets ready to roll me into. But yeah, like if if she is looking, because she says she's been unsuccessful relationship wise, right? So if she's looking for somebody to date, just him asking that question the way that he did it, I don't feel like that's somebody that. No, I don't think he's on. You know, that's somebody that's just trying no. to get and I, and some I of think, that big old ass if she does have one. So she, move on to the next one. I mean, he's seen the photo. She got to have a big old ass, or he wouldn't ask that. Um, since we here right now, relationship wise, with you being by definition a sex worker, uh, with the OnlyFans, with the socially awkward, even though you're a podcaster, you promote sexual liberation, and you free te- the titties. Yes, please free <laughs> the titties, unless they saggy. Even then, have some some clout about yourself. Um. And you also basically providing the sexual experience through Commerce Candy Closet. How has your current shift in your life been relationship wise now that you're technically a sex worker? And my relationships been? Yeah. Like does yeah. the fact that you're a sex worker affect one relationships that you have attempted to be in? And two, how has men's approach been to you? Well, honestly, a lot of guys haven't really seemed to care about me being a sex worker. Okay. Um, but that's because they've been wanting to sniff them draws. Right. For but a that's long what I'm time. saying. Like that doesn't mean that they have good intentions in it. True. You know, um, the fact that I'm a sex worker, I feel has actually intrigued a lot of people because they're like, okay, well, you know, I've seen some of what she can do. I want to experience that for myself. <laughs> so then they try to come you know with the whole gentleman approach or you know well you know that's just oh my bad business this ain't my show (laughs) i was interrupting your conversation you you make as much noise as you want to you know but uh feeling that a lot of that isn't really genuine but i always tell dudes like look like with what i'm doing right now i'm not looking to you know get to know anybody i'm not looking to date anybody i'm not that's not what I'm on you know what I mean like I'm I'm getting in and I'm getting out like I have my specific people that I'm working with and that's it and then that's another reason why I feel like dudes think that you know if they show that they don't have a problem with it then maybe they'll get added to the content roster like no I work with who I work with you know what I'm saying like when I'm done doing what I'm doing and I feel like I'm ready to get in a relationship and settle down of course, you know, I'm always going to be honest about anything that I do, anything that I've done. So if he feels like that's something that he's not insecure about, something that he feel like he can handle that I've done and he wants to move forward, then, yeah, I'm all for that. But as of right now, no, like I just I don't want to be bothered with niggas like that. Okay. Like um, getting my content and I'm moving the fuck forward because I'm I just I don't want to date because people annoy me right now. Mm. It's you know, what? it's funny because. There are at least three or four entrepreneur women I know who literally they just got out of a relationship. I mean, like less than two months. And they said that was the worst thing that they did was try to run a business and date a nine to five man at the same time. See, I don't even feel like it's that for me because you got to look at like I'm doing a nine to five and running the business. I went back to work because I'm like, shit, nigga, the more, the, the more money, the fucking merrier. Um, but it's not so much that because one thing that I can say 
people can disagree all they want to, but as a person who now I have my own business and I'm back at work, but this is not the first time that I've had my plate stacked. Right. I was working two jobs, going to school, and had the girls at home all by myself. So I'm used to being busy. I'm used to having a lot of things on my plate. But I still made time for everything that I fucking wanted to make time for. If I wanted to go watch a UFC fight on Saturday, guess who went to fucking watch a UFC fight on Saturday? If I felt like I wanted to give this nigga the time of day, I made time to give him the time of day. Like, if I tell you that I'm too tired, I'm too busy or whatever, it's it's because there's nothing about you that you're making yourself stand out to where I feel like I really want to give this nigga some time. Oh, let wow. let me clear something off my schedule so that I can kick it with him. It's you. It's not me. True. Like, look how, you know, even going back, you know, a couple of years ago when I first started dating Marv, when I first started dating him, I was working both jobs. I had the girls. Going, I had all that stuff going on. But because he did stuff to stand out from the typical guy that was approaching me, trying to date me at that time, right. I made time for him. Whether it was when I got off my second job, before I went home for the night, making sure I stopped, kicked it with him, chopped it up or whatever. Like when I got off on a Saturday, all right, well, usually I would say home, chill, not really do too much. But I go to the movies with him, you know, whatever. Like, so I'm going to make time for what the fuck I want to. She gonna make time for what the so fuck if, she if I'm not making time for you, it's because you haven't done enough to step up to make me want to make that time for you. Otherwise, I'm gonna sit home, ass naked, watching Disney Plus, minding my goddamn business. And she loves being asshole naked, people. That is correct. It's a known fact that um, we just can't come by her house without calling first. No, you can't. No one should. Shit. Unless they got an inventory delivered. <laughs> Horrible person. Horrible person. All right, let's let's get back into these questions. Uh, damn, where'd they go? Okay. Another female. Females love sending you questions. I, I remember that as well, too. Question, I have a friend. We are cool. We've been knowing each other for going on six months. He says, I'm the most positive person in his life, and we are together every day. He spends the night all the time, but I have a feeling... He said he don't want to date now. He wants to get his life together. But I like if we're together, just no title. And yes, we do have sex. Why are you here? Does he really want to date me or do you think he's just using me? So I'm going to need you to read that question. One more again. In so many words, she's been kicking it with a dude for six months. Mm -hmm. Okay. They spend every day together. They mm-hmm. do all the shit that they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. But when it comes time to have that conversation, he says he wants to get his shit together mm-hmm. before he is in a committed relationship with her. Now He's not saying he don't want to be with her. Mm-hmm. He just wants to get his shit together. And she's confused. So she thinks she's being used. What do you think? I think. He full of shit? Absolutely. Okay. So this is my thing. Now, shout out to Melissa. She commented on my live. She said, I just came from a bridal shower and your business cards were all over the venue. I made sure to hand them out to every woman there that I felt would be receptive and interested. I'm proud of you just for being open and doing you. I love you. Thank Boom. you. Boom. No. Let's give a round of applause for that. Um, but I mean, that that goes back to like what I said earlier. Like People are going to take everything that you can give them because you know the whole bond is better than the title thing and it's like if you really 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 care about somebody you really fuck with them like that you're not gonna hesitate on committing to them you know what I mean if you have somebody that's that dope as that bomb they're the most positive motherfucker in your corner they got all this shit going for them but you don't want to initiate that actual commitment that relationship is because you know that you don't want to give up the other shit that you got going on that's all it is you want to be able to have all of this good and positive shit with this person women do it too it's not just guys because i don't want you bitch ass niggas in my comments well women 
it's people period fine but you want to be able to have this connection with this person and get them for everything that they can give you but at the same time you want to keep your options open you don't want to close that door on what you think may come in as better than what they're already giving you so just need to pack it up and find somebody that's on the same shit she on now, if she's like me and she don't give a fuck about being in a relationship right now, then that's fine and dandy. Because I, I got people like that. I got a couple of them. I don't got just one. I got a couple of niggas like that. You do, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, like when I feel like, you know, I'm having a day and, hey, I need some comfort or something, they'll come through. They, you know, chop it up. They kick it. They comfort me. They do whatever. Might get some dick, whatever the case is. And then I send them on their way. Because I'm not in that portion of my life where, I am going to beg somebody to settle down. I'm not going to sit here spending all of my fucking days trying to convince you why I am the one that you should want. I am not going to sit here and draw up a fucking PowerPoint presentation on why you need to choose me over anybody else. I'm going to get what the fuck I want from you the same way you're trying to get what you want from me. And then I'm going to send you on the fuck goodbye until I see you next time. So when I need some dick, I'll send you a uh, messenger because most motherfuckers don't even have my phone number. That's terrible. I don't even give my phone number out to niggas. That's terrible. But hi, too. Yeah. <laughs> because it's easier for me to block you that right. way. Right. It's than easy out of my for you to get, to get the problem out your life. Yeah. So, you know, once I block you on social media, I don't have to worry about you calling my phone private and doing all this other kind of shit because right. you never had my number in the first place. All right. Let's move on to this one. All right. I had to go dig way back into the inbox for this one. Oh, God. All right. I don't even know if this is a guy or a girl. I'm thinking it's a girl. It's a girl. It's a girl. Makes sense now. All right. I'm addicted to rough oral sex. Nibbling, biting, pulling of my lips and clit. I totally enjoy the sensation of being sore to the point that when intercourse occur, it's hard to get it in. I'm naturally tight, so that makes it even better. Although I truly enjoy this, men always seem to be as gentle as possible. Which I understand, but trying to explain this to them seems like they just don't get it. How can I explain it better to them? And are there really other women out there who actually enjoy this? I don't know because I'm not one. I, like, I, there are, again, a lot of kinks for a lot of different people. So I'm not judging her because of what she likes. That's just not something that I'm into. Because right. I told y'all, I've had, like, with my ex, he was pretty boy, light skin ass nigga. <laughs> so he wasn't used to bitches making him give oral sex oh my you know so with me nigga you finna learn so i had to train him up and in doing so you know i took an l i took a i took an injury for a little bit i mean he got amazing that's probably why that nigga tried to kill me so many times after like bitch you got me eating pussy and now you trying to leave but my shit (laughs) swole up it looked like a fucking walnut literally like a fuck you know what a walnut look like i know the walnut. Do you know what a walnut look my pussy look like a walnut because he latched on to that motherfucker like oh so imagine you know when you go to scrub a dub and you put your little dollar in the vacuum machine and you know how hard it latches on to your carpet it was like that and i probably had a carpet back then for real because i don't think i was really I know I wasn't waxing in, but I probably wasn't shaving either. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. I don't even. But, <laughs> you know, and I'm ta- and I think he thought with me, because my voice caught in my throat, it was so bad. And with me tapping on his he head, thought, like trying to, I think he thought, thought that, that man were, kept going, like I was coming there. or something. Right. Like, no, nigga. Stop. It hurts. All right. Um, but yeah, you know, if that's something that she's into, then maybe she start needs to start looking uh, into those types of communities and shit. What about um, toys? Do we got any toys that can give her that same sensation? Well, uh, there are a lot of suction toys. Most women, because they're so sensitive, they can't make it past the first setting. Mm. Uh, Destiny will probably be, I just brought that in on Monday. Destiny will probably be something for her uh on the highest now is the destiny the one setting. that had that's the one that the, the that's the, the one you said looked like a peace pipe it did <laughs> i'm sorry i don't know why you didn't start the clip from there I, I watched the clip and i heard myself in the background <laughs> well because they only give you like 16 seconds on okay. the story so i had to chop it okay because i was like and then you just heard it pop hard as hell yeah it's funny is that one remote control too or that was just no that one isn't remote control but there are three different 
uh, functions on there. So there okay. are three different buttons for you to control it. There is the tongue function. So that's the top button. So that's that the middle bu- That middle button controls the suction on it. And okay. then the bottom button controls the vibration. Okay. So you hear that women get that destiny? Yeah. Definitely want that. If you into that really rough, you need your pussy be destroyed. You can, That way you can do it on your own. Yeah. Because like I said, with the amount of, uh, like the level of suction that you know most women they don't go past number one so so what's next for mimi dinkins aka cummer walker there's a lot it's hard for me to really um kind of get into it not because you know i don't have a plan but more so because i do and you know unfortunately i've noticed that since i've been doing this um you know I'm not the first person to sell sex toys in the city. I'm not going to be the last to sell sex toys in the city, but it's more than just selling sex toys to me. Right. You know, um, with me actually being able to sit and talk to people and give them, you know, that advice on their bodies. You know, there there's a lot of people who are just completely ignorant to the fact of how things work. You know what I mean? So being able right. to sit and counsel them with that, that's an amazing feeling. You know, okay. there have been a lot of people who've come to me. One's actually, you know, a married woman. She told me like flat out. She was like, dude, she was like, dude I think you saved my marriage. Like with me just hmm. being able to coach her through certain things and give those product recommendations and kind of let her know, you know, in order for you to really be pleased like you have to learn what you like you right. can't always you can't rely on somebody else to figure out what your body likes like you have to know so that you can guide somebody else to it um but i i just i've noticed you know like a lot of things that i've done or you know started doing are starting to kind of catch on now right and i feel like you know with the amount of people that were in the sex toy game before me like a lot of those things should have kind of been done already. Right. And not after I hit the scene. Like, um, I think it takes it takes for someone who's popular to make it acceptable I'm not for even a lot popular, of people. You, people hate my guts. Popular means well liked by the nope, masses. No. Nope, people nope. know who I am. No. Nope, they know are, my name, but that don't make me you popular. Are, you are well liked by the masses, and the reason why I can say that. Is because one, you wouldn't have over one hundred episodes if people wasn't listening to you. That's two, not true. I just like to talk. You have ten. <laughs> you have over. You average over ten thousand downloads on your your show. Now that's people fucking with you. You have people who definitely support you in all your business ventures, regardless. And let's not forget how when Mimi said something on Twitter or on Facebook, it damn near became law. Don't start that shit. I'm just saying. Yeah, I said damn near. Okay? So to sit there and say people don't like you, that's a lie. Okay? So take your flowers while you're here, fam. Well, okay. So I'll put it this way. It's more so not really people liking me or fucking with me. Right. I think a lot of people would just rather not be on my bad side. Same so, difference for some people. Well, not really, because it's like with me, because we all know, like once I start, I don't really stop. Uh, you know, once you make yourself known to be an enemy of mine or, you know, against me or whatever, like that's how I'm going to treat you from right. that point on. And I think that a lot of people, they don't really agree with me. They don't really, you know, fuck with a lot of the things that I say or my thought process or how I operate is just. Well, I I really just don't want that smoke, so I'm gonna just leave it alone. I think that's honestly what it is more than anything. Motherfuckers just don't want smoke with me. It's not because they like me or because they respect me. They just don't. They don't want a war, <laughs> and they don't want <laughs> yeah, me targeting when, them. Yeah, because when you on your rampage, fam, I feel bad. Yeah, well, people need to leave me the fuck alone. Then. Well, they will. All well, right. before um I get out of here. I do want, because I got some new stuff. I was going to give you that spot. That's why I asked you that question. Now, I know when you when you look at your 
when you look at your clock, I know what you want. No, I just look at my clock to see where we are. I'm just keeping track. This is my show. It's not your show. The kids, it's the weekend. The kids is good. Right, but I thought you said something about. We got we got time for that because oh, okay. I, I still see the tables outside in the hallway. Um, so before we just ended up bickering on the air, I was going to say, so Mimi, you, you almost damn near don't never come to do an interview without having some tricks in your bags. Um, so go ahead and let the people know what can they get off of Cummer's Candy Closet? So. They can't hear you over there. I know. <laughs> you started. Can I, can I dig in my Barney bag, bro? Dang. It was like you started talking, like, so we have. And I just was like, they can't hear you over there. No, I'm digging in my Barney bag, bro. Relax, relax, relax. See, and I made the camera be to a point where you don't even need me to hold anything. It's all right. Aimed right there. I need to borrow your phone for a second. What do you need my phone for? I need your phone for a second. Oh, my God. Is it unlocked? I can. So again, I am at Sherman Phoenix. So I do have, um, I got roses on deck, and I, I, I hate also our, have. This is what you know. I hate our brother. Yeah. So I also have twice as nice. So if y'all want to grab them, y'all can because I am out. I know a lot of people they don't be want to wait. People are impatient, and then they won't have to pay that five dollar delivery fee. I know a lot of people be wondering, like, well, why don't she do free delivery? Because I drive an F one fifty. That's why. That's why I don't that do motherfucker it. big too. Yeah, I drive an F one fifty and driving back and forth through the streets of Milwaukee because you know people want to twiddle their diddles. <laughs> it became excessive. Like the amount of back and forth that I do, like with my delivery routes, doing deliveries and stuff, it was just it was a lot. Start doing the zones. So, like you only have free delivery within this amount of range, and then the price goes it, up uh, as further it goes. The, it doesn't break it up like that. Uh, I was no, like, do it like, the, like I was gonna say, do it like the Chinese. Because I, I had, I had to do, um, I had to break it up to where, like, I don't even do deliveries on the South Side anymore. I can understand but, that because I, I had a lot, you know, a lot of South Side customers, but it was just, it was. So, was is there a much. storefront in your future? Um, I haven't been lucky in finding a storefront with me having an adult toy store. Um, the rules and regulations are a little bit different. I can't just, you know, pop up and open anywhere that has a, you know, store for rent sign in the window. Right. Um, I have to make sure that it's properly zoned for what I want to do. Make sure there's, you know, no schools, churches, residential, you know, whatever. But I think it's four or 500 feet, but that's yeah. just for the city of Milwaukee. Right. Other municipalities, it may not matter. Um, I did find a spot in West Dallas, but it was too close to temptations. <laughs> And it was just, you know, be I'm not worried about, you know, a little competition. Like I said, I'm not the only motherfucker that sells sex toys in the cities. But it's just, I didn't know how they would feel about, you know, being that close. Because Temptations is on 98th. That would have been on 84th. That's a real. That's close. Yeah. Yeah, See, that's kind of close. And you never know. Temptations, they've been like the number one adult when spot. When I was a kid. Like the number one adult yeah. spot in Milwaukee, period. So yeah. I don't need you getting off in the middle of the night and we find you on the bed choked by a dildo because <laughs> temptations didn't Shit, like you if I'm going to go out, that's how I want to go. They wanna find, we don't want you going out because you moved in on somebody's turf. Turf. Just saying. Temptations been around for a reason. Yeah, well. They gotta get it together. So I'm in. Right. I'm in the uh, my Google Docs, and I haven't been in this Google Docs in a minute. But we got some episodes in here that we got to go back and redo. Yeah, I bet. Because they were some good topics. I don't think the show ever went that way. Okay. So again, uh, definitely have flower power in the building. This is forty four dollars. Uh, damn near everybody on social media at this point is familiar with the rose. Um, it is a clit sucking vibrator toy. Um, I have seen very, 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 very few reviews of women saying that, you know, they didn't like it or it didn't work. And I am willing to damn near bet both of my titties that they just didn't use it right. They didn't put it where it was supposed to go. Um, once you put it direct like the hole is supposed to go right over 
uh, your clit and suck on that motherfucker like a lemon. <laughs> so if you are not using it correctly, then I can understand why you probably have a problem, but it definitely, uh, it works in less than a minute. Um, but even better than the rose, I tell people this all the time, the rose has the clout that it does just because you know it's the popular thing that's what everybody is hearing about so that's what they want they don't really you know pay attention to things that people aren't talking about but as a person that is not only selling sex toys but i am very versed in the use of them i can tell you that twice is nice is just that like this is um it has the suction of the rose here so still clit sucker but tone look i like girls so if y'all can see that little thing moving so this is the twice this is the twice as nice i've been hearing a lot of great reviews about that too like I've heard, this I've been, actually has more reviews than the flower. Right, I was gonna like. say I've heard more people going that direction than the flower, and I think like like you said, people are only really getting the rose right now because it is popular. Right, yeah. because there's people who I randomly be hanging out with people and they're talking about buying the rose, and I'm like, just go. Well, to actually, um, you know, I did my pop up shop right back for valentine's day and a guy came in and he saw him, he was like hey what's this so you know i ran it down to him and let him know about the twice as nice and he was like yo that motherfucker co-. so he called his girl right you know on facetime in the middle of the pop-up shop and he's trying to show her and she i don't want i want the rose i want them. like like she's snapping on him because she's heard about you know right. the rose but he's telling her like babe like this is better like Cause I had the display out. So, right. you know, he put the suction on his hand. He like, damn, like that motherfucker really going. And then, you know, with the tongue and everything, but you know, people don't really know. They don't know until they do it. Yep. Until they finally, like, you know, take I that chance. Like but everybody people, that's taking a chance on right. it after they listen that's to saying, me. That's what I'm saying. I feel like nobody people, regretted it. I feel like people who go crazy over the rose, somebody would have to buy them twice as nice. Right. In order for them to test it out. Right. Yeah. So won't be me though. I don't just have uh, vibrators. I also have dildos as well. <laughs> what? Why is that funny? I'm laughing about uh, what was the big boy. So You got another one? Yeah. So <laughs> now, listen, Doc Johnson, Ultra Skin, is f- like that shit feels so fucking amazing. Like, if you ever fuck with dildos, like because he has different formulas, like there's the ultra skin, there's the firm no, 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 skin. I'm, I'm, I like I'm, the ultra skin. I'm just laughing because, like, somebody bought that massive. I had a couple people buy it. Two. That's the fat l- D. The two ounce liter <laughs> dildo, <laughs> and I just want to know. I wish you, I wish we could get in contact with some of your customers so we can actually just have a question, a Q and A. Well, I I have people that you know, I think um because somebody recently like she's local and she just bought a a ten inch from me, but she also she does OnlyFans, right? You so know that, what I mean? So I mean, you could subscribe and figure out how that went. Yeah. I'll just be talking about like yeah. the, but this this the is out of, out of the norm ones, the perfect D, the eight inch. I also have seven inch. So this is just a standard suction cup dildo with the balls. Just <laughs> and I had a ball. Just be in the shower tearing yeah, yourself but, up. Uh, b- but with this one, you know, it has the veins and everything. Of, like, is it's very realistic, especially with the material. You, but tried that I also one? have, like, the basics 10-inch mo- model where it's just, like, it's just smooth. <laughs> you know, like the back of your jeans, like, just smooth booty dick, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and the smooth booty dick. I I personally like the dildo with the veins, but hey, you know, feels more realistic, more honest. Yeah. Um, which brings us to the ten inch vibrating mm-hmm. king cock. <laughs> is that new? Yes, this is one like, of my you, new. You've never brought that in the studio yeah, before. This is one. I actually, I I got three new dildos. That was the first one. Okay. And then I have this one. This is actually a suction cup dildo as well, but it vibrates for you. Um, the good thing is like it's posable, so even though it comes straight, you know, if you like curved dicks, bend that motherfucker however you want, 
and however you see fit, you know, to make sure you're getting your spot hit. So basically, you can break the dick without yeah, breaking so look, the dick. Here you go. See? So it's posable. So, you know, if you want it straight, you get it straight. You want it bent a little bit, do what you need to do. Bend it for G spot stimulation. I feel like that was, that's written on the box somewhere. <laughs> huh? I feel like that's written on the box somewhere. Why? Bend it, bend it whatever way you want to for G spot stimulation. Well, shit, damn near. So one of uh, my newer items is I have the Doc Johnson signature cock. I was gonna ask you. I have the twelve Sorry. inch anaconda. From Safari Ultra Skin, I told y'all how bomb Ultra Skin is, right? It's the fact. Yeah. I'm just I, it's, it's no, safari. but you know, so it's the so this is well. A lot of people, I know, you know, and as much as a cornball as people <laughs> think he is, everybody was looking at his dick. So it was. It's a lot of women that have been interested in this so far. Um, but even though I know it's twelve inches, like I don't want you to be alarmed by it. Like it's about nine and a half inches insertable, like. One thing you need to know when you are purchasing dildos is the length that it advertises the dildo as doesn't mean that that's how much dick you'll be taking. (laughs) Um, They They measure it. They measure it from head to base, including the the suction cup base and the balls. So, you know, something may be advertised as a 10 inch dildo when in actuality it may only be seven and a half to eight inches, you know, that you're putting inside of you that you're able to use because it cuts off at the balls. Unless you're one of those freaky motherfuckers and you stuff the balls up there too. I don't know. They're going to try to take it all. You know, I've heard the phrase balls deep. So maybe that's what that means. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's what it is. It's putting as much dick all the way to the balls. Crazy though, I never knew he had them little weird ass lipstick uh, tattoos on his chest. I'm not looking at that man's tattoos. No, look, I see he it now. Lips on his chest. That could have been photoshopped on the box. Yeah, but <laughs> but again, so this does have a vibrating suction base for you, so you can get all that dick and get Pause. your little, get your buzz on. So, um, this one is for my anal people, uh, whether it is straight people. Or my LGBTQ. Like, hold, hold that one for last because there's a follow up question that I was going to close the so show. So you with. don't want me to show this one first? Don't show that one yet. Okay. Well, I also have smaller items as well. So you have your Pink Passion Bullet and you have your Eve's Copper Cutie Rechargeable Bullet. Uh, look, bullets are the trusty go to. I mean, the, the know, bullets have you, been around for years. Exactly. So, you know, when you need to get something, you need to get going quick, but for a lot of times, uh the bullets are battery operated. So, right. this is nice because this is actually a rechargeable uh bullet. So, I wonder why it just took keeps so long going for them and going to make and going rechargeable and going. bullets. You know, and as you can see like with this Adam and Eve, Doc Johnson, Satisfier, Cal Exotics like I have the real deal shit. Um, One thing that you will notice when you're shopping with Cummer's Candy Closet is that I take pride in the products that I offer. There are very, very, very limited products that I have that don't have a name and a brand behind them. Um, There is, you know, no U.S. manufacturer for the Twice as Nice or for the Flower Power yet. So those, you know, are overseas based but for everything else i have u.s based vendors and my products come with manufacturer warranties and guarantees you may see a lot of products that look similar um but they don't come with you know those specific guarantees i want something that when i sell it i want people to be confident in their purchase to be able to say hey you know, if I buy this and it's outside of this period or whatever, that's okay because I went on DocJohnson.com and I registered my dick with the site. So if something goes wrong, they're going to send me another one. So right. that's why, you know, um, I know a, a lot of people, they, you know, AliExpress, Alibaba, whatever, no knock to them. But that's just, you know, you know, what's funny. I, go on I like to get actual name brand products so that I can. You know, right. people take you seriously. Right. I actually go on Alibaba, but I don't go on for anything other than technological stuff. Yeah, I don't. Um, I don't be wanting to deal with that. I need you to 
yeah i don't be want to deal with that because like i said I, I want for people to be confident in their purchases and not having to wait fucking six months you know in right. order to get their merchandise so when i order something and i'm re-upping all my inventory i get inventory in on a weekly basis uh my inventory usually arrives uh thursdays fridays and saturdays i like to get people you know people get freaky on the weekends right. <laughs> people get but, more freaky on the weekends. yeah but i um i do get inventory in weekly so again if there's something that's you know sold out that you see that i haven't had in a while maybe sales were kind of low on that and i kind of tapered the inventory down but if that's something that you're interested in takes nothing to shoot me an email or uh hell message on facebook to say hey you know you know when You'll be getting this back in, or I've been interested in looking around for this product. Just let me know, and I'll see what I can do for you. So, before we get out of here, i got to ask you one more question. And this is the reason why I asked you to save that toy over there. So, a person basically wrote in a letter saying that they are a huge fan of anal sex. What can they do? To help get their partner more comfortable with having anal sex, and what prep listen. work? And what prep listen. work? Listen, listen. Stop I, being hard headed. Who? Because I I know where the question is going, so you don't even have to finish reading it. A lot of times, when it comes to anal sex, and this is myself included, I love, love, love anal sex, but you can't tell from the people that I deal with. They'll tell you that I'm jacking about like an anal sex because I didn't like to do anal sex with them. The reason why I didn't like to do anal sex with them is because they are fucking hard headed. Okay. You have to listen. You niggas don't want us taking shit and just jamming it up your ass at all. So you have to be mindful of that. Like, you know, that's a road less travel. <laughs> and <laughs> it is nice wordplay, you know, but I don't want it if you are not going to listen to me because that's a delicate area. You know what I mean? And if you're showing me that you can't even respect simple instructions or me telling you like, okay, you know, ease in, then work your way up to whatever goes. Like you moving my hand and shit and just trying to like niggas get too excited and they do too much. So as much as I love anal sex, I don't really get to have it because niggas don't allow me to fucking enjoy it. They turn me off because they do too fucking much. They get too aggressive with it. Now, once you're in there and we've started, if you get to, that's fine. We're there, but you can't just take the motherfucking just, you know, like that's not how it works. You have to ease it in. You have to make sure that your com- your partner is comfortable. Um, for people that are interested in oral and sorry, uh, in anal sex, you want to make sure. Well, this is something that I do and people know. <laughs> This about me. I am very, very, very strict on anal cleansing. Uh, yes, there's a whole episode. You want to make sure that you are being cleared out as much as possible. Uh, I do sell anal dishes as well. Um, I like to make sure that I'm prepped for it. I don't like spontaneous anal sex. It's not because I'm worried about it hurting or anything. I just, I like to fully be prepared because when you are in there i want to fully be able to relax and enjoy every fucking sensation that is coming from it because it's amazing i don't want to have shit in the back of my mind like oh my god what if what if what and then i'm tensing up and making it weird right you know when you are dealing with anal sex you want to be as relaxed as possible you want to make sure that you know your partner is comfortable lube people lube is not a dirty word i sell tons of natural lubricants on the site tons so i want you to get comfortable with being able to use lube you know when you're having sex especially anally because anal tissue is very delicate you know what i mean it tears easy so you want to make sure that you are using lubricant you want to make sure that you are taking your time with entry especially if it's somebody who's not used to doing it um please 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 anal douche before you do it please i just 
Yeah, bro. Let her anal do. She don't want a shitty dick. Yeah, you know. Like, and that's, if, if any other reason other know, than that. Hey, if that's your kink and you're not worried about it, then yeah. be my guest. But for me personally, like, you know, a lot of people like spontaneous anal. I don't. I, I don't like spontaneous anal. I want to make sure that when I'm going in there, I know what we're doing. So if I hit you and say, hey, look. So on Saturday, you know, when you pick me up, I was thinking. And we had that conversation first. Then I get it. All right, bet, bet. So then I know that by the time he picked me up, you know, everything is flushed out. Right. Everything is clear. I'm good to go. And when we get started, I'm relaxed. I'm chill. I'm not worried about any type of accidents or, you know, any feelings or anything. Because a lot of times, especially when you're not used to it, when it's first entering you, you're going to get a sensation that you're not used to. And you, oh, my God, I feel like I'm going to, like, it's not. You're not. You'll be fine. Um, What? Nothing. I've heard this story a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, but I've heard the story. I I want people to be able to enjoy sex because ladies, we are not a lot of times actually enjoying sex. There may be a nigga that you like a lot. You're very attracted to him, but he's not getting you where you need to be whenever you have sex. It's okay, I've been there. I have definitely fucking been there. Like, it wasn't that the sex with the person was terrible in the middle of it. The act didn't feel good, but I was never completed at the end of it. And it got his nut, but I'm sitting here like, all right, well, you know, that little 15, 20 minutes was fun, but you just going to cliffhanger me? Right. <laughs> I got the cliffhanger nut, but you got the end credits like, <laughs> you know, and I don't I don't want, you know, you guys to be like that. So with me having the store, I try to sell those products that you are able to use together because a lot of guys get intimidated and they feel that women are trying to replace them with sex toys. No, we want to be able to use those things with you. We want to be able to enhance the overall sexual experience for both of us. We want to bring you into the fold, nigga. But if you can't handle it and this motherfucker's doing a better job because you don't want to, you know, be a teammate, then fuck it. Bye. Do you think that's the reason why a lot of men don't like when they find out if their woman does use toys? I do think it's an ego thing for the most part. Um, They're looking at it and feeling like, well, if she's using sex toys, I got the hiccups. Then you're not doing your job. Right, but that's not the case. Not always. Mm, Sometimes she... Listen. Nobody likes to drive a cold car. (laughs) Okay? That's the best analogy I can give you. Do not not people go out here and buy remote starts so when it's time to get in a car, it's all warm and toasty? A toy does that for you. Listen. My top dick, my numero uno my championship like world heavyweight champion dick okay like fam you gotta chill <laughs> no like um, i need to let niggas know like the champ is here dick like that's him he is my top dog when it comes to dick guess what we use sex toys and i come with him like i squirt cr- like everything everything comes with him like <laughs> One shit, nigga. One fucking day we finished. I was like, "Niggas, my ears leaking. What the fuck?" Like it just, he springs leaks. Like it, he's great at what he does because we have that type of relationship where we both are fully aware of each other's bodies. That does play a factor, top too. to bottom. I know every spot on that man's body. He knows every spot on mine. Like we've taken that time throughout the years to where, like, we are entirely intimate with each other. So let me ask you a question. So do you feel like sex today has way more pressure on it? Because like you said, years you guys learned each other's body, you studied, you probably taught each other different things about each other. So you guys always have phenomenal sex. But if you were to go out and 
start somebody new, the expectations is for this person to be damn near a master at what they do too. Do you think that's actually a fair assessment of the way sex is in this day and age? No, it's not that I expect people to come in and be able to do everything that he does. The reason that he gets the props that he does is because he was willing to learn those things about my body that he did learn. A lot of niggas come in thinking that you can't tell them shit about your own mm, fucking body. Okay. They feel that they automatically know your body because they knew another bitch body. Mm. What she like might not be what I like. That is what I like true. might not be what she like. I hope not. So you can't come in a situation thinking that, oh, well, I was king dingling, you know, I, I ain't had no complaints, so I know what I'm doing. You can't assess your dick off of previous bitches with me. You shouldn't want to, honestly. Like, because first and foremost, I am into a lot of shit. Are you still using my phone? Oh, no. no. I am into a lot of shit that a lot of bitches wouldn't touch. Yeah. And I'm mad. Part of that being it. male, male, female threesomes. I've done those. You see, you know what? I feel like society has put. They have, but we all know how I feel that. about what society's labels right, no, no, are. I and I feel like society, that's why I like, me and you, we can have these conversations. You know, I am non judgmental on any fucking thing you do. Let's be honest, I'm probably the, br- the brother who will probably encourage you to do some of this shit. That's because your Air Force does. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to live your best life in the most happiest way possible. Okay, I've ne- you, I've never told you don't do something outside the fact of it's not going to work in your favor. I've never said, well, don't do that because that's just not right. I'm like, if you want to take 12 dicks at one time, nigga, put it on camera. You can charge 50 bucks for that. 50? Nigga, that's really cheap. I'm just being... I'm insulted. Look, I would have said that before you start the OnlyFans, hmm. but that's another thing. You know what? You're right. Because niggas paying 50 bucks just to see you spread your pussy lips on camera. Yeah. Minimal. So I apologize. That's a good grand. But Damn, Boosie pay more than that. Damn, my <laughs> nigga, what you... <laughs> Boosie also get kicked off the internet like twice a week. So I don't know. That's probably why he has to pay that much. But no, what I'm, what I'm getting at though is like for a woman to want to participate in two dicks simultaneously... Is always looked upon as a bad thing. Like it's not even labeled a threesome anymore. People immediately refer to it as a train. Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, it is a train because you got an engine and a caboose. That's the only reason why it's really called a train. Now, actually, uh, a lot of people don't realize terminology. Yeah. But with a threesome, it is involving three people, no matter what the genders are. Exactly. Uh, a train is now threesome is three people having sex simultaneously, same time. Three people. Isn't a train supposed to be like swapping? Regardless of the gender. Right. With a train, it is multiple people taking turns. Right. It's like to have sex with one person. Now, a gangbang is (laughs) a group of people all having sex with one person at the same time. And an orgy is a group of people having sex with each other all at the same time. There's terminology for these things. A lot uh, of people are just ignorant to it because oh, they want to put stigma on one right. so that we feel ashamed about it. I ain't oh, ashamed I, shit. I, I, I know the terminologies, bro. So. I partied. So if you were ever confused, I just broke it down for you. Yeah. And that was a moment with Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> we used to have these all the time on the Death Fresh show. I actually want to kind of talk to one about bringing them back. You know, that we can have the. Hey, my hiccups went away. Yay. Because you were talking about dicks. You know, <laughs> I tried that once, like sucking dick while I had the hiccups. Dog, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to chill. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but uh, so we have come to the end of this particular episode because, you know, the building is getting close to kicking us out. I'd like to thank my sister for coming through. Uh, with this moment, I know he did all that. Talking about some hold it because we no were no, talking no about I'm animal. going. And then let he didn't even let me show. It. It's a booty hole. <laughs> I just want to say that. Yeah, because I normally am the one who always says it. Yeah, um, I just want to say that. Yeah. So is this supposed to be like tighter than the pussy one or something? 
Well, a lot of people are just, they love anal. So with this one, like the hole is a little bit tighter, but yeah. it has a pressure it looks plate. Like, it looks like the so pussy one. this right here, this is, this is a pressure plate. And what happens is when you stick your dick inside of it, <laughs> what? When you, you know, when you're stroking, like you were able I'm to stroking. depress on the pressure plate because I let you feel um, the honey gold one. Remember how soft that one was? Yeah. So ultra skin again, Doc John's killing with the ultra skin. Um, but it allows you to make it tighter around the penis. Like your, you can vary the pressure based penis. on what you like while you were stroking it. So you be stroking. I'd be kind of jealous. I don't have a dick sometimes. Cause yeah, niggas always complaining about us having sex toys, but y'all be having some dope shit too. Niggas because just be acting like they too good to use them. That's what you say. Because we don't use it too often. Or if you like, for an example, like, if you go over by your boy house and you need to grab a towel out the cabinet and his, you know, ejaculator 5,000 falls down, you're going to feel some kind of way. You looked at it as being weird. Plus, it was always the weirdos who always had the, the most extraneous stuff. Like, you go into your boy's room and he has a blow-up dial. <laughs> now, he probably just went to a kegger party that past weekend and then they played a joke. Now, but, don't sell blow-up dials. The reason for that is because I feel like they'll be too easily damaged is or pierced or something. Is a blow-up dial even something popular anymore? So, yeah. Um, people still use them. I just don't sell them because it's like I want people to be able to get their money's worth out the product. And I feel like they're too easy to be damaged. And then you done bought this motherfucking you can't even use it. So I'm more into any sex dials that I sell. They're um, silicone sex dials. Are your sex dials popular selling items? So I actually had to, uh, I took them off the site for a bit because I am trying to find a different vendor for them. Okay. Cause shipping was a little bit complicated with the one that I had. And it I was just, like it, it was, be. yeah. Um, I'm about to buy myself one though. I want the. Uh, Are you gonna get that? I one? want the male torso you, for my OnlyFans videos. The trans, not the trans one, just the regular male torso. Okay, I feel like you personally should buy the trans. You know, I actually I was thinking about it, but I'm like at the angle that I would use it, they wouldn't be able to tell what tell it was if anyway. It was a man or one. okay. Yeah, they wouldn't. So be able to tell. So for those of you guys who don't know, Mimi loves titties. Yes, I do. As well, she loves dick. So she has this one trans bake one, this pre op one on her page. And we kept telling her she should buy it for herself. But is it really pre op or it was just not all the way? Because they got they any, had the titties. Until you get the dick removed, you're considered pre op. Even with titties? Even with titties. Because the But horm- that's the operation. No, no, not really. Because you take you could take pills and medications that cause the titties to No, it didn't be surgical titties. I'm just because then be some perfect ass titties. But they start that's off. That's why you know I won't get perfect titties because Perfect titties is a lie. Well, I don't want perfect titties. And they be hard. I don't want perfect titties because I don't want some big ass perfect dead titties. I love my nipples. Even though a lot of you niggas is weak and y'all don't even suck titties no more. Who who the fuck raised y'all? I just don't. um, don't You know, when they take your nipple off and do all this shit and get to relocate and then pin pin a nipple on a donkey, I don't want all that shit and then I lose the feeling in my nipples because then I just have these big beautiful ass titties that are useless and I don't want that. So niggas gonna get these soft, slightly depressed titties. Look, <laughs> just slightly. I have dealt with women in my past who have had sad titties, and when I came to the realization that when they're on top riding, they're in the perfect location for sucking. So I have no problem with sad titties. Well, niggas love my titties in missionary anyway because they bounce on them on my back I and they do like this. So. I don't. I don't want to know about what. At, well, I'm talking to the people watching. I know. So, with that being said, we've come to the end of this episode. Once again, I'd like to thank my sister for being here. She has been a very vital part of the growth of TDR and the Deaf Fresh. Show. I made them step their shit up, y'all. Just, yes. We, go, so, we just going to say it that way. Yeah, she did. So, for those of <laughs> you guys, we didn't talk about it because I was more focused on the business side for her. So, when she started Hoshly Awkward, um, we were still on Blog Talk. Um, and we were comfortable with blog talk. It fit with us. We didn't have to go nowhere. Everything was self-sufficient. And we recorded her first episode. And she said, fuck you niggas. We need to improve this. So I took a thousand dollars out of my savings. I went and bought equipment and we recorded at her house. 
And we've never looked back since then. And now look, it's studio time. Oh, we're not done yet. As soon as I have this conversation with a couple of guys about a business, there will be more. Uh, so with that being said, Mimi is definitely in the will somewhere. Um, I might just leave her the business and if I die because at least she will give a fuck. <laughs> um, everybody else, I feel like they'll be like, well, I don't feel like dealing with this. You know, I'm bougie with the business shit. Right. That's what I'm saying. She's going to at least hire the right people or sell it off to somebody who knows the value of it. But we wouldn't be here where we are today. So every podcast that you hear on TV. No matter TV, what size dick you buy, look, I got big bags too. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I hate her sometimes, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't change her wouldn't change her so make sure you check us out on all streaming platforms this particular episode will be featured on both the death fresh show as a bonus episode as well as the first episode for season three of where i come from and mimi tell everybody where they can find you at well it depends on what you're looking for everything if you're looking for the booty hole it's onlyfans.com slash comer underscore walker that's c-u-m-m-e-r underscore walker why are you looking that way? You asked me to plug myself. I just it's and I do plug myself on OnlyFans. <laughs> then you want <laughs> fuck this shit. I'm out. Mm-mm. Fuck this shit. I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just <laughs> grab my stuff. Ooh, that's and leave. Excuse me, please. Fuck this shit. I'm out. And if you are looking for the pie, Hoshily Awkward is available on all of your favorite streaming platforms, including. Spotify, Apple. We are even on Amazon now, guys. Yeah, I saw that. It was random. I just did a random Google to make sure nobody was biting my shit again because people love to bite my shit. Um, yeah, so all of the major streaming platforms. And if you are looking for a sex toy and lingerie, I actually have a lot of merchandise coming in next week. Uh, I'll say by Thursday it should be here. Um, definitely plus size ladies you want to make sure that you check it out i have a lot of new stuff coming in for you guys as well so you can shop at www.comerscandycloset.com that is c-u-m-m-e-r-s candycloset.com for all of your lingerie and sex toy needs if you have any questions whatsoever about any products please do not be shy uh i had somebody inbox me um a couple of days ago saying man like you know how long it took me to come to you <laughs> to be able to ask you this question. And I'm like, you know, I don't ever want anybody to feel like I can't be approached about anything that I sell. I don't care what the product is. I am going to counsel you on it. I'm going to educate you on it. If you have any questions, I'm going to make sure that you are comfortable in buying this device or whatever it is. You know this, what I'm saying? Before you do so. This diabolical machine. No, because I was about to say something else, but because men and women or, you know, everybody purchases, you know, I didn't want to limit it like that. But, you know, whatever you are interested in from the website, you can always, always ask me questions. You know, like I have I have prostate play kits on the website. You asking me questions about that doesn't mean that I'm going to. Oh, you know, such and such asked me about this. Oh, man, he gay. Like, no, first of all, you there are what? a lot of guys that, you know, you can take pleasure in anal stimulation. That does not mean that you were attracted to men at all. I really need y'all to grow up and get out of that. Um, God, but, you know, just, just because he you asked me. In the butthole. Right. You know, just because you asked me about a product, it does not mean that I'm going to make assumptions about you. And I am definitely not going to tell people what you were asking me about any type of interactions that we have whatsoever that are related to the business or any type of purchases or inquiries or anything that is between you me and whatever god you serve that is nobody else's business whatever products you ask me about so don't ever feel like you can't come to me uh because you know there won't be any type of discretion i'm always making sure that i am safeguarding all of my customers information uh, any type of purchases that you make, I don't care who I know, whether it's your sister, brother, or whoever else. If you don't tell them, I ain't go tell them. So, with that being said, people, we are. Hey, tracks. We are out of here. <laughs>